everybody, it's Mrs. Hoffberg. Let's talk about temperature. So we're gonna start by talking about the units for temperature. Um, given that this is a chemistry class, we are not gonna be using Fahrenheit. That certainly is our most familiar unit for temperature, but not one that's very convenient for most of what we're gonna be doing. Instead, there's gonna be two units for temperature that we're gonna use in this class, and that is degrees Celsius and Kelvin. And we talked in class about how the fact that our temperature relates to the motion of the particles. Well, let's take a closer look at how these particular temperature scales were derived and what kind of information and meaning we can get out of these numbers. So first off, um, degrees Celsius is all about water. So zero degrees Celsius is where water freezes. And 100 degrees Celsius is where water boils. And then the difference in temperature between those two points was divided up into 100 equal pieces. So you have your 100 degrees Celsius. You can definitely have temperatures that are less than zero degrees Celsius anytime you're below the freezing point of water. So, you know, January in Ohio, the temperature is going to be a negative degree Celsius. So maybe negative five, negative 10 degrees Celsius. And that's the unit that our thermometers will read in lab. So when you're taking measurements in lab, you're gonna be recording the temperature in degrees Celsius. And the higher the temperature, the hotter it is. The other unit that we're gonna use a lot, uh, especially when we're focusing on what's happening to our particles, is Kelvin. Kelvin's one you don't usually see kind of in our everyday world, um, but it's one that's incredibly important and incredibly insightful. So water freezing, if we use that as kind of a benchmark, that happens at zero degrees Celsius and at 273 Kelvin. And water boiling happens at 100 degrees Celsius or 373 Kelvin. Two things I want you to notice, excuse me, notice. First, there's no degree sign in front of the K for the unit Kelvin. So we just say 273 Kelvin, not degrees Kelvin, just Kelvin. Uh, secondly, is that there is a difference of 100 between where water freezes and water boils. And so the size of a degree in Celsius and a degree in Kelvin is the same. That's gonna make it really nice when we start talking about converting back and forth. But what makes Kelvin so amazing is that unlike being based on the freezing and boiling of water, Kelvin is actually talking about the motion of particles. And we saw and we talked about in class how particles move faster when they're at higher temperatures and they slow down at lower temperatures. Well, here's a question, how slow can you go? The slowest a particle can get is not moving at all. And that's what zero Kelvin corresponds to. At zero Kelvin, the particles stop moving. And that happens at negative, or sorry, that happens at zero Kelvin or negative 273 degrees Celsius. So particle motion stops at zero Kelvin. And that means that you can't have less than no motion. There is negative, excuse me, there is never a negative Kelvin temperature because you can't go less than none. And since Kelvin's about motion, zero is as low as you go and that has another name. It's called absolute zero. So now that we have these units, we can pretty quickly talk about how to convert between them. Since degrees Celsius and Kelvin have the same step size, the conversion is simply an addition. Zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. So to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you're going to add 273. On the contrary, if what you already know is Kelvin and you'd like to find Celsius, you're gonna subtract 273. Just as a way to check yourself, the Celsius temperature will always be smaller than the Kelvin temperature. And again, you can never have a negative Kelvin temperature. Let's look at just at one example to make sure this is good. And then we'll make sure we reinforce the connection between temperature and motion. So let's say a room is 23 degrees Celsius. What is that temperature in Kelvin? Well, to find the temperature in Kelvin, We'll take 23 degrees Celsius and we'll add 273 to that. And that gives us a value of 296 Kelvin for that temperature. The last thing I wanna do before we wrap up this quick conversation on temperature is to make sure we reinforce what temperature is. So temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy or the motion of particles in a substance. And the higher the temperature, 
the, the faster and greater the motion of the particles. Most specifically, the greater the average kinetic energy of those particles is. And the lower the temperature, the lower that average kinetic energy or the motion of those particles will be. So as we wrap this one up, temperature is related to the average kinetic energy of the particles. Uh, the higher the temperature, the higher the average kinetic energy. We can measure that temperature using two different units in our class. We're going to use degrees Celsius, which is based on the freezing and boiling points of water. And we're also going to use Kelvin, which is based on the motion of the particles. And to convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, or vice versa, you're either adding or subtracting 273.